Excellent. Oh, good evening, everybody. Um, I put my, my, we're going to talk about files today, but I thought I'd just once again, give everybody a chance to, uh, to ask questions on programming in general uh, or in Python uh, or in particular, the homework questions. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, the, uh, for real long answers, we have our uh, dedicated question and answers uh, session at the end. But uh, by and large, uh, if you have a question, uh, now's the time to ask it. And uh, we'll let you know if it's, uh, we have to you know, delay or anything. But I think uh, if you have a question, uh, probably uh, your co-listeners, uh, uh, students also have the question. So you can do everybody, including yourself, uh, uh, a service by asking it. Uh, I think we have a, a, a enough people that uh, if you ask a question, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can uh, enable your camera if you so choose. Uh, but in any event, uh, probably unmuting yourself is the... the first thing you want to do if you want to ask a question. So I said, now's the, the chance to ask uh, any of those questions that you, you things you found confusing, things you uh, were hoping we were, uh, uh, since we're like on the our next to last session, uh, uh, you had some idea that something would be covered and it hasn't. Uh, you can ask a question about it. Uh, you can ask about it. Uh, if there's something we talked about, um, you can ask that question. If there's something about you've heard about Python uh, and it's confusing or you're wondering about it, now's the time to ask. Anybody? Okay, well, if you do have a question, please uh, ask because uh, uh, this is your chance. Uh, uh, next to last chance to have a, a live uh, response to a question you might have. There's lots of uh, stuff out there uh, about programming in Python, uh, but uh, your uh, access to a live uh, programmer is uh, limited. Okay, uh, this uh, week we're gonna look at uh, the files. The files is a, a time-honored uh, capacity or uh, capability of uh, programming uh, that's been around uh, almost as long as programming has been around, but uh, maybe just a little less. Uh, in essence, uh, if you talk about uh, files, uh, whoop, let's see, let's go to uh, files. I, I shorthand to data that stays around. Uh, programmer uh, and programming uh, deals with a program creates data, but unless you put it someplace, uh, it's gonna go away at the end of their run. Uh, so uh, from the very beginning of, uh, of programming, uh, there, there are a number of things that kept us from, uh, at least there, there were, let's say, restrictions. One of which is, um, uh, the computers, uh, especially if we talk early computers, uh, uh, the, the, the computers couldn't hold all the data they wanted. That being, and the data being included the, often the program that was running. Uh, and then there's the second part of sometimes a program uh, deal created some results uh, and so that had to stay around such as the business programming. Uh, you did uh, all sorts of uh, uh, 
business transactions, and uh, this is on business is an ongoing uh, process. So the results of those business calculations uh, needed to stay around. Uh, I mean, in the very very early days, that uh, people would manually uh, write down results, copying from the you know lights or screen of a computer, and uh, uh, that was very uh, error prone mostly is what people were worried about. Time consuming and uh, arduous is probably not something bosses worry about, but they do care about um, error prone. So the computer files, if we call them, and they essentially evolved from physical file cabinets that of initially uh, contained uh, card decks, punch card decks, I guess that people would call them at the time, or punch tape. Uh, they evolved to magnetic tape and then, or disc. And then uh, most recently uh, uh, areas on the internet cloud to keep the data. In the early days, the computer uh, work required a detailed knowledge of the structure of the data on wherever it resided. Uh, nowadays, uh, mostly the idea of uh, files uh, or data files um, are, are worth thinking about. Uh, essentially, uh, essentially, uh, if you talk about a file, it's just, it's just a stream or a list of bytes, very large lists often, uh, or characters on a disk. Sometimes, uh, uh, things uh, now can be formatted. I specially arranged and interpreted uh, as to their use. Uh, such things as your, uh, if you use a, a Microsoft Word or Excel, uh, the data on those files, if you looked at it in minutia, uh, you'd find it very hard to correspond the data you see uh, to actually what the data meant. So that was what we call formatted data. But often the, the files are just characters or sequences of bytes. Uh, your program, uh, your Python programs that we uh, create using idle are that's those sorts of programs. You look at the files on that uh, uh, in detail and you'll see they're just those characters that you typed in. Now, uh, files have some basic attributes. One is they have a name. Uh, and then it's very important because these files reside wherever they reside for longer than your computer program stays around. Uh, and then you have access, you have ways of getting to that or putting that data there. Uh, open a file as a, as a concept or an operation that creates the file if new or writes over the file if it's already existed. Reading or uh, writing the file sequentially puts data into that file and actively, and then at the very end of uh, uh, the use of that file, essentially you close the file so it remains um, available. And sometimes between the open file and the closed file, that data might reside really partially uh, in memory and disk or a memory in your computer. So you only, that file, the updated files only uh, often recognized once you've closed it. So anyway, though, that's the idea. This files are data that stays around. Very useful for uh, a number of things. For one, uh, the uh, uh, file ex is accessible by name, uh, which we said, uh, it's, created and are used by other programs, uh, stays around uh, after the program is done, usually a linear or often only read or write access. I usually either read the file one byte after another, or you write the file one byte after another. There are all exceptions, but by and large, the vast majority of file usage is that way. Often you have big data. These files can be mammoth data, and that's often one of the original reasons for having a file, because 
you have so much data, it could not fit in the computer all at once. In fact, your computer program, your Python program that we've seen examples of, are examples of these things we talk about as files. They create created by you with the text editor, which we called idle. Idle is more than just the editing, but it, editing is a big part of it. It is used by you via the Py, Pro, Python program compiler, i.e. you take that program file that you created and you pass that to the program Python program compiler, which we talked about, you use the run command and such, but it's mainly passing that a, a, the name of your, your uh, program file that you created to a, another program, the Python program compiler, if you will, uh, and it executes that or interprets the, the meaning behind those bytes and does something. And then by the way, the, the program uh, that you created, that file, it says he stays around for future access. All right, so that's the, the idea of the file that we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna talk about, um, it's a lot to, for people uh, that are just starting with programming to pick up a, a, a concept, a, a big concept, but we're gonna to try to provide at least the roadmap for you to use. Here is an example of, uh, we're gonna look at it closely, but just sort of the overall view, uh, file has a name, and in our case, my text, my data.txt, and then a structure, uh, this with clause is a new keyword uh, that uh, is used uh, by a, to give us a structure of reading or writing files. So, the keyword is with, and then there's open, which is another keyword with a, a function that reads the, the file or opens for read the uh, file that you put in the um, file name. And this as fin put, or file input pointer is just a techni technique for you telling the uh, Python that uh, you want the further access to that file via this variable fint. And then uh, in the loop, just like all things, the loops uh, are in the body of this indented portion. We just have another working variable called line no. We set it to zero here at the beginning. And then we say uh, the fint is actually in, oops, let's see, go one back one can be used as an it, it called iterator in, in Python, just like the other uses of for. You can say for line in fin, and what that does is it goes through this iterator that was set up by the open. And for each iteration, each pass, it's gonna set a line in the file that it got through this file pointer, which was set up by this open. And then we're gonna bump our line number by adding one to it. That's remember that's just plus equals this is a shorthand for line no equals line no plus one. So it's just an easy way to add one. And then we're gonna do a print and the print is gonna do uh, print uh, two things, a line no, which is a number and then the line which is read in. And remember this end equals is just a way to say, oh, I'm not gonna put anything at the end of this print statement because the file that was read in all already has line ends to that. So why don't we just take a look at, uh, let's see here. Uh, if we go look at, here's our, you can get your own, and you should. Uh, under exercises, files, read file, if we just pick up that, uh, let's see. Um, bring up our 
idle shell and look at, and let's see if it's in one of the recent files. Uh, in this case, I think uh, somewhere here, uh, read file. Hope that's in my work. So let's go to get the one in uh, files, files. Oh, if, if you don't find it, an easy way to do a thing is to go here on one of the things that has uh, files, exercises, files, and then if you just go up here, once you've opened a file that's nearby, if you just go open, then you say, okay, I want it in exercises, files, and if I go find read file, I double click that. Let's see, we don't need this one. And okay, so here is a pretty much what we have in our slides. Hopefully you have that in your, uh, you know, wherever you put your intro, exercises, files, read file.py. You should be able to bring that up. And uh, We notice, okay, remember just to review, that's our comment line at the beginning with we uh, specify our date, our file name and, and date. And here we just said uh, the same things we talked about here. So let's just try running this and you should try running yours. And sure enough, uh, here is we, we ran it and here is uh, what we printed out. If you wanted to take a look at the actual file itself, uh, you if you looked at the uh, file explorer and you just took a look at um, uh, using a notepad or whatever you have on your computer uh, and exercise files and we said we were going to look at uh, my data dot text, my data dot text. And that's what the actual file looks like. And notice uh, we did pretty much uh, print out what we uh, expected. Um, Oops, let's see, I didn't want to. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. There's our, our, our file and you can sort of see the, uh, what we print out. And if we, let's see, there's our program. And here is the actual data. And you can sort of see that um, the output printed out a line number. That's what we were keeping track of. We just counted the line numbers from, uh, we, we incremented before we printed out. So the line numbers are gonna go from one on. And you can sort of see that they printed out and everything came out. And notice they, uh, look pretty much like the uh, data in our file. Now, uh, what happens if we we forgot to put this out, as we see in a lot most print apps? And why well, you blind should just cut that out? And if you say, okay, run it, and although we really shouldn't have. I didn't want to change the thing in the file. So let's, before we, let's undo. Here we go. Let's, before we, we say we're going to try to do this on our own, uh, let's do some little experimentation. Uh, hopefully you got your file. Let's save it. Save as. And let's put it in your my work and we'll just save it under the same name. 
And oops, it says already exists. Well, I was playing around, so I'll say yes, I'll replace it. If if you haven't done it here in your my work file, uh, you shouldn't get that message. So I'll just say yes. So here we have uh, our program. Now we should have said with this end equals thing is going to take the end lines off. Let's just take that off and try running it. What happens? Okay, yes, it must be saved, so we'll save it. And sure enough, um, this is the sort of thing you might find uh, uh, if you didn't realize that data in most files have line terminations. I uh, and the end of each line text, they have the end of line. Uh, if you did the normal print, it's going to take the line, put it out, print it out, and also because it does at the end of a print statement, puts an end line, it's going to do another one. So there you have a duplication. And so you get these double lines. So if we just go put, put this back, another, we'll put it back. And then we say, well, what happens if the file I'm looking for uh, doesn't exist? Say let's let's put something here on the uh, name of the file that probably doesn't exist. So we'll then do a run. What happens? Ah, okay. It says with open as no such file or directory. So. That's the sort of thing uh, you'll get if you try to read or a, a file that doesn't exist or some other error, but most of the errors are the file that you asked for didn't exist. So don't be uh, too worried about that sort of thing, except it, to understand what it's saying. It's just letting you know that, ah, this file, we, we didn't find one. So if we go back and change it back can we to the file we do know. Mind you, if you found that and you, uh, and it, it was a file that you wanted to have, you could certainly create it by uh, using a notepad or, or something to that effect. So notice we have a with open with our file name that we put in a variable because it's nice to have it in a variable. Uh, and then we iterate through um, the variable that was set up by the open. And we just print out, um, in this case, line number, the line. And at the very end of the print, we're going to have nothing extra because the lines read in have an end of line. Any questions? All right, it's a lot to take in, but it's worth uh, uh, any any questions that just jump out at you and you'd like to ask right now because saying something's unclear. So this is how you read a file, any text file. This will read just fine and print it out. Any questions? Okay. Well, that's reading a file. Now, how do we create a file? Well, it looks very much uh, the same, or similar, if you will. We have a with, we open the file name, and but open has a other optional argument, which is a text string of which A and W and R are uh, useful terms. R means read and W means write. So in this case, we want to open a new file called new underscore data dot text. And we're opening it in the write mode, it's called. This is the mode uh, parameter or argument to open. Okay. And then pretty much we do pretty much a similar thing. We're going to loop through and remember how we we use range because it, it gives us an iterator 
uh, starting at some number, ending at just less than this thing. So I usually use a plus one to remind me that it's, it's just going to really go one through five. And then we're going to print uh, that. And we use the, our, our, our oops, we're going to use our uh, formatted string so that it's going to, this line is going to come out exactly the way it is here, except that when you have curly brackets, it's going to take the number, the thing in this, the value inside this curly bracket and replace that. Yeah. Now that's going to print as we always had our print statements right online, but we're going to put a second line out, which really does what we wanted to do. And that is do exactly the same print you had here, except we have this other optional argument, which is file equals, and you put out a uh, file pointer that you got created by this open. And what that means is it's going to print out exactly what you had here to the screen, but it's going to print it out to that file. Now, uh, here is a create file, and we can just take a look at that thing by going here. And if you say open, probably it's going to say, oh, my work, I, I didn't have it in my work. I had it in exercises. And I'm saying it's in files. And in here, it says create file. Oops, create. Ah, create file. And up comes our example for create file, which is pretty much what we saw on the slide. All the good stuff we talked about putting. And this thing here at the end is just sort of thing I was saying, well, uh, I would put out for people who wanted to just read the, the files and maybe not execute them, what it would actually look like at the output. And that's sort of what the output looks like. But we, we can run the file. So we'll just say run. And before we do that, so we can check things out, we will take this and let's save this as we saw. We, wanna, we might want to change this. So we're going to save as, and we're going to put it out as in create file in my work. And we'll just save. Oh, it already exists. Well, we're going to replace it because we want to start what we have here. And let's just try running it. Now, it's important to note that when you create a file, you will destroy anything that's there under that name. So you have to be very careful about picking names to files to create that they don't overwrite some very useful information that you might have on your computer. So we pick names that are not like are very unlikely to be uh, data that we or files that we hold dear. So we will just run this module. And sure enough, uh, remember this is this is what we uh, printed out. That's what this line prints or let's let's go here. That's what this line created. Now to see what the, the second line creates, what one has to do is pick a uh, editor and we could pick the same, we could pick our idle editor if you like by saying uh, open. And oh, I hate that because it's, I don't like to do, that's why I always say pick, Pick something recent. Oh, okay, create. And what I said, okay, what we want to uh, move this thing down here. Uh, we'll go here now and open and say, okay, my work. And we're going to remember this. The reason you only see PY files here is because your editor here says, oh, they probably only receive Python files. But in our case, we want to take a look at .text files. And sure enough, new data.txt. 
And if we don't we look at that, ah, look at that, it's, it was created just now. So if we just open that up and there is the file that we just created. In fact, if we don't, if say we didn't trust ourselves, let's just, Okay, and now let's just run this file program again, and you should do this on your own if you. And we're saying, okay, now that's that we don't see it here because we didn't. It didn't uh, update itself, so we will just. Uh, Uh, wait a minute, it's my work. And yes? Did you ask a question? Oh, okay. Um, let's see if we... Uh, Okay, my new data text, W, and then we just, just take a look, open, my work. Uh, oh, because we're, ah, okay, See, it, it did indeed create it again. Uh, with, with the new contents. Okay, any any questions here so far? Because now, let's try doing an exercise. Huh. And this is pretty much doing what we, on your own, what we did here. Uh, let's create you, if you haven't yet, creating your own examples in my work, doing a write example create file dot py and running it. And then second is a read example, read dot file dot py. So um, anybody have a question? So we're just just trying to do these two, but on your on your own. And if you have a problem, now would be the time to speak up. And uh, as I said the first thing is to create a file, and I will I will. Um, and if if you need uh, for right now, I will leave. You don't need to comment here. I will leave my example up there for a moment. And, uh, you know, if need be, you could just literally uh, create a file out of and just do that. And, but, but see if you can get it to, uh, and the reason I do it, I ask for the examples in the order is, is that um, you can use the file that you created as the input for read file. And this, notice my case here, uh, I have my data, but you can, you can just use that instead for your read file example. But uh, let's see if you can, uh, we'll give you a, a couple minutes and then I'll start sort of, redoing it uh, here, but uh, you should try to see if you can uh, do it on your own uh, and get, uh, you know, if you run into problems, uh, that's the time to ask.
Okay, I hope, how are people doing? Let me know who is got one working. Who has had any problems? Well, let's, uh, here is a, a thing I just tried to type out. Let's see how good I did. And what did it say? Oh, line, okay. Oh, well, what did we do wrong here? Uh, ah, because we forgot to do file equals so that the print goes to to the file. So let's try it again. Oh, it looks good there. And let's see if we just go and uh, let's see. We'll open and We'll say, let's look at all, uh, no, well, let's look at text files and new data too. And it looks like we got pretty much what we were hoping for. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, New data that text up, but where's sir? Oh, here's our new data two that text and it starts two, three, four, five, six. And that looks like well, and we printed out the copy on the thing. So that looks okay. So if we just put that over there and say, okay, now let's try the way you normally do in a, a development environment. We take this file here and we say, hmm, we're going to create a, uh, uh, a create file. We're going to now make a, a read file example. So what we'll do is we'll do a save as, and we'll come here and we'll just make it read file class. No, it's a read file class. We'll go here and just for speed, we'll just say, we'll make that very important to try to be religious about putting those top lines down. And then we say the file name, oh, we know it's going to keep the same name as we had before. And with open, oh, but we're not, it's going to be a, oh, we should also change our read file example. And we are not, we could get rid of that thing, but we'll put out R for read and we'll change fout to fin, file input uh, pointer. And we're not going to, let's see how we can, oh yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep uh, thing, but we're gonna change it. We're going to go from the first line to, ah, we're going to just read as many lines as they're there. So let's not take that and say, okay, we're going to do a loop for, whoop. for a uh, line. In so we're going to go through our iterators. Iterator here was set up by the open, and we're going to just print. Uh, well, we're not going to output to a file, so we're going to get rid of that line. And we're going to just for the nice of it, what we're going to do here.
we'll just put a comment here to sort of remind us of what's going on. And let's just try running this. Oh, what's it say? Read file, file name. Oops, well, now we know what that was is. That was, we have to put the F for formatted. And the N is not defined, is name N is not defined. Well, let's go down here. Oh, by the way, this here, you, you click on this and you go right click and there's go to file a line. It doesn't look like, a, oh, maybe we have to go here to with the actual error. Ah, ah okay. Now, as we could have put, um, we could put show line numbers here. And what's it say? Right here it says N is not, oh, because of course, we changed our example, but we forgot to, to print out. And what do we say? Oh, I guess we didn't want to put line numbers. So N equals zero, say, to say no lines and then We're going to bump N and then here we're going to say, we're going to put the line number here at the beginning. I like to do that for. And let's run this. And so it's supposed to be just saved. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Oh, what do we do? Ah, we forgot. At least it looks pretty good here because we remember the lines when we did our second example, we, we started with line two just to make things different, but we forgot because the input lines already, those lines in the file already have a new line at the beginning. We're not going to add our own extra. So we're gonna put that there. And let's try running it. Ah, okay. Read file. That's what the. Okay. Um, anyway, well, that's that's uh, my take there. Uh, how about uh, how are things going? Uh, you can be. Can can somebody say how they did, or if they had a problem, or if it was too easy? Somebody. Hi Ray, this is Muge. Um, when I yes. ran, when I, I think I'm missing my, uh, I got an error. I got the error message saying that I am missing the new underscore data to text file. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. You, you. Uh, this is in your read file example, right? Uh, did did you do the create file example? Yes, I did, but maybe I didn't. Oh, uh, yes, it. you did. And you, you probably created a file called uh, newfile.txt, as I see my example. So, yes, indeed, you, your file error is exactly um, as it should be because uh, if you did the new create file, it look at your example, and what you probably have is uh, new data.txt. So, right. you, so get, just go. Take the thing and, and, and make it new data instead of in your read file. Uh, change it. Answer. And of course, I will. Oh, because I probably already have a, I already have a both. I have both the uh, examples. But yep, so that's. Worked. Thank you. That was it. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to get somebody else. Everybody else got it? Maybe didn't quite. Is there a problem? If it, please, please, if there is a, uh, if you have something, uh, you know, still a problem, even if you weren't able to do anything, let me know. I would like to know uh, how many people, uh, I mean, 
I, I'd like to love to assume that everybody here got it perfectly, but I have a feeling that uh, maybe there were some things that we haven't explained as much as we could, and we would like to explain them better, if only to, uh, if we can find out anybody who had else who has a simple, uh, you know, or not so simple, a question. You can ask, even if it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'd, I'd really like to get a sense of, uh, of what's, uh, you know, what problems people have or what questions people have. This is a, I mean, this is not, a, these are not big programs, but they are very powerful and they are the basis of a thing we're going to go on uh, uh, and use these examples. So, uh, I'm hoping that if you if you haven't gotten your uh, create file or read file uh, to work, uh, you'll ask a question. Because in fact, we're going to go. The next step is to take this uh, read file example that you created uh, and ran and uh, do something. So I really. Appreciate it if uh, if anybody has a problem uh, with it or anybody doesn't have it uh, written and working, uh, please uh, ask a question. Okay, I assume everybody has it, so let's go. If you don't, you you should ask because uh, it is real easy to get. Lost. Okay. Okay. Um, we're saying, okay, here's a little simple file. We talked about a little example here in our uh, read file. And we said, okay, um, what can we do with this? How can we extend it, and make some something happen? Um, Let's see. Ah, I forgot something. I will have to, uh, we will take a, a short uh, travel back because what I was hoping to do when I asked initially, uh, does anybody have a problem? I was hoping that if people had a problem, uh, example of ex in our project. Remember our project uh, doing a 20 questions? We are, our homework was to take and uh, take what we had iteration five, or you could, if you weren't able to do it yourself, you could take uh, the copy that we have and uh, under 20 questions to have iteration five, which looks like this. Remember our, our, our last our previous uh, iteration five went through the process of adding a preamble with the range. And in fact, if we just ran this, and we ask, Okay, and that's what we had, but now, gee, we're at the end. It would be nice to have the program, and this is where your homework was, uh, to, to be able to uh, allow for multiple games, ask the user if they want to play again. So we'll just go over our solution. Actually, we'll, we'll develop in class uh, it together. So what we do is when we take an iteration five and when we go to iteration six and add something, first thing we do is we open the file as we did here, our iteration five. And then we just say, let's go and save as. And we're gonna save it in uh, my work. And we're going to rename it. 
iteration six in my work. And it already exists because I've been playing around, so we will replace it. And here is our notice, iteration six. Now, the first thing we do after, uh, when we do something like this in developing new things is we rename it as we did here, and we rename it in our top line. And we go here and say, what is it? Uh, 19, and hopefully you can go along with this. Uh, we could probably take off this first iteration line here. That, but we could come down here and say, okay, we're going to add uh, the next thing we do, which is uh, Okay, so here we are. We have the program. Now, anybody want to hazard a guess what the, this, the thing might be here? A brave uh, person can, can suggest how in general will we change this program to allow the user to play multiple games? And so a brave individual, just, you don't have to do the whole code, just what, what in general, would you do to this program to um, support um, asking the user if they want to play another game? Uh, maybe use the create function? Well, that's a possibility, but uh, in this case, I don't think we have to, we don't have to create a file. We just, I think we just have to and play the game multiple times. What, what does the word multiple or repeated tend to uh, envision? What sort of uh, constructs programming that we've talked about uh, does things multiple times? We have an example right in front of you here. What, what do we use to do? In our case, we wanted to, to, to give the user multiple guesses. What do we use to do that? Read file? <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's not file, having to do with files. It just has to do with how to, in, in, in this program here, in iteration five, we ask the users multiple, to, to allow them to do guests multiple times. What do we use so that they would do it multiple repeatedly? What, what keyword do we use? In this case, what, what do we use to, to, to allow them to do this, to require, to, to allow them to enter the guests or prompt them multiple times. What, what keyword do we use? Hint. We're going to ask, uh, let them guess while, while we wanted to continue. So we used while to allow them to, to, to prompt the user multiple times. In, that case, in this case, we want to do that over the whole thing multiple times. So one thing to do is, well, the target we're going to probably ask each time. So. Let's say we're going to do everything all the way down to there. And we're going to use the select and tab. That's just the, the easy way. And so we're going to ask them and do it. Now, why don't we say, let's, let's see what happens here. And by the way, since we, we want to uh, speed up our testing, we're going to just do temporarily for debugging, we're going to set the target to five, which is a little less, okay? Now, look at this. All we did is we took a while 
true and put everything we had before that asked for, um, we set the target up and then allow them, prompted the user multiple times. All we did is we took everything there, indented it and made it part of a, another while. We'll call that sort of nested while loops. So let's say we run this. And oh, look at that. And they look at it with game. So notice we've we've actually done most of the thing. We've we've allowed it to play multiple games. Now you, you might say, maybe what I want to do here is uh uh something here and let's say um congratulations let's let's say um let's say to make things uh a little uh thing we'll put at the end of our when they enter the game We'll just put print. So let's if we run that. Now it's all we did is we we indented our whole thing in a while loop, and now um, let's see three. And so notice it is it makes it a little clearer what's going on. Um, Okay, so there it is. Look, we, we've we've uh, done multiple games, but we haven't. Uh, well, what do we what do we have to add next? Here here is a, a remember all we did is we took uh, this month stuff uh, and added a, a while before it and then indented everything. And this allows us to actually play multiple games. But we said, well, what are we going to try to do? We're going to ask them if they want to quit, right? Because otherwise, this would just allow, would let them play multiple games, but would uh, you know just keep them playing forever. So, what would we do if we want this loop to stop? Remember, we had, we said we're going to ask the user um, if they want to quit, right? So we could do something like if, ah, well, well maybe we're gonna ask them. So we're gonna say uh, uh, input, we could use something like answer or something, input. And now we're gonna say, remember we use it. Or we could say, if we want to be shorter, we could say, uh, here's a, if you want to have, if you want to put a quote inside a quoted string, you can use this thing called backslash that it goes escapes the, the special meaning. So, And what do we say? Oops. So we just say we we prompt them using our input, just like we entered the guess, and quit playing. So let's see how well this worked. Enter our guess.
All right, so there we are, I think. Uh, notice uh, sometimes uh, if you pick the right thing, you, you have to program least. So we just said, well, the simplest thing to say is, okay, we, we hope he wants to play a lot of games. So we'll just say, we'll ask him, we'll just tell him if you want to stop, you'll, you'll press N. Now notice if we said, okay, capital N, Oh, wait a minute. We wanted them to, we wanted that either way. So I guess what could we do here? Well, we could say if nth equals uh, lowercase n or uppercase n. Uh, control C just quits the thing and prints out that nasty message saying uh, keyboard interrupt, which is what so uh, let's see. Oh, let's try it. Okay, so there you are. Um, any questions? Okay, so this is this is the. Uh, um, I think uh, that's iteration six. It supports multiple uh, plays. Uh, ask the user if they want to play again. And what we did is, if you just take a look at, uh, let's just take side by side what we had before. Iteration five here someplace. Uh, oh, here we are, iteration five. And you can sort of see that pretty much uh, we added the uh, commentary, at the, or we changed the name of the file, of course, and then we added a commentary at the beginning of uh, after the preamble, we just added this support multiple plays, ask the user, and nothing much here. Uh, if we go, we get things looking pretty much side by side. And really, what we did is we just added this, we made because we were do what we were doing in a big loop, we said, okay, let's just have our other while, which is gonna be a thing. And the only different thing is we're gonna, each time we, we do this thing, we, we're gonna do the same at target. Now, we, we, don't, we didn't wanna put the preamble each time. You could, but we saw in this case, it's, it doesn't make much sense. But we make this whole section here, that does the loop for asking, uh, entering guesses, we just put that whole thing in here. We added, uh, we, to make it show up, we, we, add, we, we put a print game end, but pretty much the main thing is we, did that whole thing in a, inside a while loop. And then the only thing we did extra to that is at the end of that inner loop, after the game end, we quiz the user as to whether they wanted to quit with another input. And then we use the if test, and um, we did the break, which breaks the most recently at, at this level uh, while, which is of course, this if is outside the inner while and part of this multiple game while. And if we could, if we thought we wanted to make uh, 
we can make some sort of commentary here. To remind ourselves what we're doing here. And we call we could if you wanted to sometimes nice to put commentary in. And we could run it just to see that we haven't broken anything. So notice this, uh, this is a very uh, nifty trick sometimes to when you have a large number uh, and you want to try things out uh, multiple times, you can sometimes put a, a, a assignment here that essentially masks this 20, see? So now, now if we just want to, we can put sometimes when I want things that are more than just commentary, but indications of we're changing. Uh, so the people, when they read this, they say, oh, this target high equals five. Why do they do that? Oh, because they want to do some debugging, uh, you know. Uh, something like that to give us a, and then it's there, it's there by itself and you can use it anytime. Notice you can, if you make a change in the program you, and you want to shorten things for testing, you, all you do is you just take these comments out and then you can put it back in whenever you need. Any questions? All right, so that's the, the next, uh, I think, uh, the final homework. There's no homework on the final week, but there is this, on the semi-final week. The only thing is our, our uh, program uh, is getting pretty, pretty close to, I think, a reasonable uh, short game. Um, the next iteration is to take this or whatever you have as this and add, uh, make a uh, test. Like here, let's say we're gonna enter a guess, uh, three. And then we say five. Oh, wait a minute. It didn't, it, well, say I accidentally, I might have typed something, I just was being funny there, but the idea is that here is, See if you can make your program here uh, a little more kinder or gentler by uh, checking to see, uh, handling the fact that if they uh, enter a number uh, and they convert it to integer, uh, this is what you get if you uh, notice it, it said guess equals. You wanna try and see if you can make it um, handle that better uh, and let the user know, instead of stopping the game, uh, ask the user to say, it's, it's a not, I don't understand that as a number, uh, uh, can you try again? Uh, a hint is you can use try and uh, accept. Uh, and you can surround this thing here. So we will, if people have a question they, about that, they can ask in our in our uh, a longer question period. So, any questions about uh, so far our uh, our uh, iteration uh, or back to our um, file? Okay. Okay, we talked about we're gonna make a notes simple database using our our read our our read file, um, and we'll probably create a little test notes dot test dot notes file with uh, some information names, uh, 
and uh, other uh, other information. Like here's a case where you have uh, Joe uh, and his name is Joe Smith. His Joe's address is 100 Main. Sam, his name is Sam Jones, uh, and his address is 20 Center. All right. So we want a database that sort of allows us to um, to be able to find out things. Uh, and we could have a. This is just a real short case. We could make a bigger case um, if we uh, want to do something bigger. So we're going to make a uh, notes.py program file that displays lines from a text file that contain a given text string. And that sounds simple, but it can be very uh, helpful. And searches uh, are abound in all sorts of computer environments to allow people. So we're going to uh, sort of build this by going through a, uh, a sequence of steps. We're going to read a specific file, a test.notes, and print out all the lines. Well, we already have something that does that. So we're going to probably start with that. And uh, then we're going to talk about how to match a line. And for example, how to match as a student. And then we're going to maybe get to three or four. We, we leave those as, as uh, exercises for the future. I prompt for, for uh, accepting file names or patterns and such. So what do we, what do, we do? Let's just take a look at um, our, our beginning. And when I say as a beginning, we go and if we say recent files, uh, I think if we go into uh, exercises, files, uh, files, uh, under the, um, if you're looking for the file I have, it's uh, under exercises, files, notes, a, a subsection of the files. Uh, and uh, we'll start out with notes.py, which is pretty much a, a repeat of what we just said there. Uh, writes a note program and so on. Uh, this what we said here pretty much. So, OK, we said, well, well we're going to uh, start out. Uh, we'll just keep that up there, because in the interest of time, we're going to jump ahead and just say, OK, we're going to start with our readfile.py, which we've done in my work. So what we're going to do is we're going to just say save as. And we're going to say, what's the program going to be? Notes, notes.py. So we save that. It already exists, yes, because we've been practicing. So notes.py, and we go here, and since it's a new file, we're going to let, uh, oops. And we're going to say, what is it? It's about uh, the 19th. And we say, OK, um, we said our file name, of course, is going to be um, test.notes, I think. And we're going to say, OK, keep, keep, da, 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 da. gee, maybe this works. Let's just. Uh huh. Notice I already have notes.py, uh, or notes. Uh, uh, test.notes uh, sitting around, and it, it worked. If I didn't have this file there created ahead of time, um, it would have had that nasty error saying file not found. But the main thing is, this is a, a large way toward our uh, example. We're going to uh, read our test notes, and we're going to Look for something in there, but for right now, we just said, "Oh, we'll just we'll just uh, go through as our we'll just take our our read file and run it run it through and see what happens." Oh, it looks like it's pretty close. 
So we say, okay, we're going to, what's our next thing? We're going to check to see for a pattern. So uh, we'll put Joe. And we say, okay, how do we, how do we now change this thing so it looks for this pattern? Well, we say, okay, the thing we do with printout, obviously, if we find it, we're going to do if something there, and we're going to print the line. Now, we haven't done anything, and it's, if we just tried to compile this, it would it run this, it would give us a nasty message. So we'll say, how do we find out if a pattern exists in the, one of these lines? Well, one thing we could do in, because we are on the net, is we can Google it. So we go up here and we say, okay, let's, uh, we're looking at Python, find thing in in string. Find the string in string. Let's see what it says. It says find. Oh, there's a good method. Let's go just take that. The first thing in the list. And forget this thing, we're gonna, and there's a find, there's a function that's available in Python library, find the index, i.e. the position of the first occurrence of a substring from a given string. Yeah, that sounds promising. So what do we do? We say if, um, and this is a, so we say, what's our li line, find, and look at that. Oh, look at that idle's helping us out. Find our sub string and pattern. And we'll just assume we're gonna look at the whole line. So what do we say? Let's just run this. Uh, let's see. Um, find pattern, oh, because he finds an index. And so what we have to do is we have to say index equals, and then now, if you look closer, it says find returns the index, i.e. the position starting at zero or minus one if it didn't find it. So we'll just say if index is greater than minus one, we're gonna print the line. So let's give it a shot. Yes, yes, we have to. Oh, invalid syntax. Let's see. And all oh, because uh, this colon here is not, well, it's in our if statements or for statements, but it's not in the regular statements. So let's try running it again. Huh, it said it's not there. Now, why is that? Why could it be? Let's, let's uh, well, one thing we were gonna talk a little bit about is debugging. When your program doesn't work, what do you do? Well, one thing you can do is you can say, let's print out the lines that are they coming out and see what and to see if that as if they get there and see if there is a, a Joe in there. Print. And we're gonna do a formatted print, and then we're gonna say the line. We're gonna put a line number here. Let's say, especially if it's a big long string, a big long file, you might a line number and we're gonna print, uh, let's see the index. 
we'll just put this in square brackets just to help us out. So uh, and then we put the line out. And we'll just run it again and maybe it'll give us some things to think about. Huh. Oh, let's see. And uh, Joe, wait a minute, Joe's there. And it said minus one. Huh. Oh, wait a minute. There's a lowercase Joe, and this is uppercase Joe. So just well, I don't want to change it. I want to be able to do this. So I, I could just say capital J. And I'll run this again. And there's our print. Oh, look at that. It uh, it did find Joe at the index of zero and it did and it did print it out here. And it found it is zero here and it printed out. So, aha, uh -huh, not bad. It, uh, it allowed us to do that. But let's say we were being, uh, and notice uh, I, I didn't put end equals, uh, I didn't, because I could have put here to make it look better. But let's say I really wanted to be able to say case independent show. Well, uh, how can I make this work? Anybody have a question? Anybody have a suggestion? Oh, wait a second. We just we just messed things up, didn't we? We said, uh, yeah, how could we make this find Joe lowercase or Joe uppercase? Well, we could notice this printout message here. If we don't, if we think it's a lot of room, we could just put that at debugging. We could comment that out. We could say, hmm we could say, let's change. Remember, we could change our pattern to lowercase. And we could change our line. To lowercase, and then we can run it again. And aha, uh -huh, it finds it. So that's another a technique, by the way, of doing case independent things. Uh, sometimes they have matching functions that handle mixed or uh, case, but sometimes uh, if you they don't. So here's a case where you can you can uh, to to make tests case independent. You just change both of the things you're looking the thing you're looking in and the thing you're looking for, you change them both or get copies of lowercase versions of both, and then you do the index. And so there you are. Uh, we have our, our little test, our little database. Um, I think we're at the uh, our end of the lecture. Um, any questions? We're, we will just uh, slip right into the the extended uh, question portion. So uh, you can just look as if you're looking for homework type of things to do. I don't think I have it there, but uh, you could um, uh, you could try to extend this and uh, try to do the things of uh, uh, putting prompts in there to ask for uh, uh, the file name or the especially the pattern. I think we have in the homework section a, a version. Actually, I think we may have a, a explicitly in homework. You can uh, 
uh, you can look at uh, the uh, homework solution section and you'll see a, 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 a larger version of this sort of thing with these sorts of uh, uh, at least two and three. Any questions? So we're now in the, uh, we're officially ending the, the, um, the lecture portion. Ah, before I forget, before I forget, so the, um, we are, uh, we don't have a lot of things. In fact, nothing on the original uh, synopsis of, uh, well, I take it back. I take it back. We do have some, uh, we have graphics on the, the next week. So we do have a, a full set of, uh, things, but um, that aside, uh, please think about ahead of time if you can. I is a homework assignment. Everybody's got to come with at least one question about programming and one question about Python that you would like to be answered. Okay, um, we're open for. Uh, questions and answers. I'll try to give the answers. Um, this is Muge. Uh, I have one question, okay. and I believe I missed when you were explaining earlier in terms of the file name. Uh, for this example, for example, you have test.notes, and yes. I copied that file that you already created from the exercises folder, uh -huh. put it on my my work folder, but I yeah. still got the error that I'm missing that file. Where am I supposed to save that file to be able to run this correctly? Well, you because we don't have any, uh, we only have the what's called the base file name. We don't have a folder specification with like slashes in front of it. Uh, when you run the program, Python will say, ah, this is the name. Uh, it will say, I assume, since it's only a base name, that it is in the same place as my program. So are, are you, when you copied it, are you running your, your uh, read program from the same directory as your, you copied your uh, test.notes? Hmm, I see. Okay. See, that is a, a very common uh, problem because people like to often run their programs from one place and their data in another. Uh, what you have to do to, to do that sort of thing, it's a little bit further than we have done here, is that you have to create a, a name and you have to, uh, you know, put in the, if you're going to, if your data is in a, if your file's in a different directory than your program, you have to make your file name uh, a complete path, uh, an unambiguous, if you will, path to your, your data. Right now, for, our, our, uh, for ease of use, if you will, we just said we put everything in the same place. But in a, in a, in a professional, you know, in a, in a production environment, you'll often have your data in one directory maybe several, and your programs in a different directory. And so you have to, your programs have to be uh, cognizant of that fact and, and set up the, the path. All right. So that, that it just essentially, uh, the default right now, because we just use the base name, is that the files, uh, the data files and the program files are in the same directory. Uh, you know, it, it, and it's, I'm, I'm, it's not a, a trivial issue to address um, because there's lots of uh, implications. People move programs, people move data. And so sometimes you have to even uh, re, uh, support the capability of looking uh, in, in a whole, in what you call a directory tree for uh, looking uh, for your data. All right, and so your program has to say, okay, uh, I have these set of places to look for uh, the, the, this file. Let me look at this file, this place. If it's there, good. Uh, if not, go look at this next place and next place and next place. So, you know, you have to have this like uh, loop or if tree that says, uh, 
go look for it here. If it's there, okay. If it's not, go next and next and next. So uh, I'm saying for a uh, you know more complicated environment, you can do it. It's it's not super difficult, but it does it does take the um, requirement that you uh, if you just put the name, the base name, the pro Python's going to assume it's in the where the program is. If, uh, if, if you have it someplace else, you have to sort of tell, uh, you know, Python, uh, uh, look here, all right? Thank you, I will that do that. That makes sense, okay. Good, good, but that is a very uh, uh, serious question and that's been that way for as long as people have had files that because of the flexibility of where you can put uh, data, uh, your programs uh, that deal with uh, that flexibility, you don't have to be as flexible. And so there are uh, uh, there are techniques, there are programs that find programs, if you will. In fact, uh, if you're using uh, uh, Windows, there are search programs that that go searching for every place. But that's maybe too general for most systems because. If you have a common name, you don't you don't want to find. Or if you have a, a name that's uh, in a different directories because it's a different vintage, if you will, uh, you, you want to be sure to look in the right spot. Good, good question. Any other questions? Now is your chance. Free questions. Hi Ray, uh, this is Bippin. The examples we've done have. Uh, the file open for either reading or writing at one oh time. well it, 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 it depends what you have is uh if we look at our uh, notes uh we have open and uh, if the the open uh if it doesn't have a a uh, argument a second argument which let's see if we can see uh for example uh in our create file example uh the second optional argument is set to W, the string W, which means it's a it's open for write. Uh, if you have uh, if you put an R there, it'd be open for read. So, so you can read or write. If, and and if you have no argument, the default. Remember how we did functions where you have keyword keyword functions uh, or optional functions uh, with optional arguments. This this takes open takes advantage of that. There is a uh, a second argument that's optional, and the default is as if you did quote r quote. Uh, so by and large, because read is pretty much the vast majority of opens are for reading data that was already created by somebody. So that's what the that's I'm pretty sure why the default is that. But you can explicitly say. Uh, you know, open file name, comma, R. And uh, there, there are some special things like there's RB, which was read binary, uh, which is a special, uh, you know, concept that if, if you go further and you want to read and do more Python, uh, you can find out that. It's, it's mostly... Uh, read is text mode, if you will. It expects regular characters. Uh, so anyway, so that that's the open is uh, you can specify you can specify the second argument, but tend tend to be is people tend to do it when they want to open for write. Uh, they tend to default it if they're going to read. Does that answer it? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions? Any anybody interested in try and accept? If one looks in the and you can take a look if you so uh, inside programming exercises, there is a slew of uh, examples which we never got to. For example, 
try and accept if we wanted to try to Oh. Uh, what did I do? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I wanted to. Uh, Here's an example uh, that might come in handy. Uh, here's our number guessing. Uh, cat's out of the bag. Uh, if I just wanted to do this, and I wanted to enter guess two, and I wanted it to, oh, that's because uh, it tried to, uh, use int, and it got a string that wasn't an integer. Well, if you just take a look at what, how we can change this, you can sort of see the example, there's file true. And what we did is uh, we said, please enter guess, but then inside, instead of just saying plain old guess uh, int, we included a enclosed, if you will, inside a try except. And what try does is it says, whatever's in here, uh, go ahead. If everything goes well, we'll just fall right through. But if something nasty happens, you have an, what's called an exception, then we'll call this what's called except, or we'll enter what's called this except clause. And what we do in this, thing is we just print the input string and say continue, which goes into the loop. So if we just go run and we enter a guess, whoop, uh, sometimes if you step in the wrong place, it doesn't read to what you expected. So we said two. So this is just a loop, but it shows you how uh, you can um, catch things. In this case, we did a loop that uh, did the int conversion of the string that was entered. And if it fails, it caused an exception, we just print out the thing and uh, send ourselves back. If, if we not, we print the number. If things went okay, we print the number entered. Okay, so that's, that's uh, a, a hint as to how you might take and make the iteration seven uh, handle um, handle typos. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, this case, you know, I might, I, I was being funny with the thing, but I mean, you could easily have somebody accidentally uh, have the, when a type of four, but then accidentally have the shift character on and get that. So, um, any questions? More questions? No, thank you very much. You're very welcome. We'll see you next time. Okay, good night. Okay, good night. And I think that's everyone. All right. Let me stop.